now doing a really good job for me not to go. Welcome to Imola for the second round of the 2022 ELMS season. We're here at a track that has staged some of the most memorable and remarkable moments in motorsport history. The Enzo Edino Ferrari circuit is seeping in authenticity. So we caught up with some of the ELMS drivers who shared their thoughts on what it's like to be here. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. It's very nice that uh, uh, ELMS is coming down here. Uh, I'm looking forward to the race. It's definitely some part of history. I think it's uh, magical here. Yeah, it feels a little bit like you're driving in, in a small town. Uh, the food is fantastic. You get excellent pizzas, so there's not so much that you cannot like here. <laughs> It's very nice. You know, the new racetrack are nice, are designed to be fast, uh, with a lot of high speed corner, all the stuff like that. But the, the racetrack, like Imola, where there is a lot of history, it's maybe better than the new one. Well, not be easy because the track is narrow and has technical corners. So, yeah, it will be. Uh, very interesting to see how the race goes. Very, very happy to be here. And you know, the, the sun is shining, it, it's snowing some Poland, so you know, <laughs> very special. It's quite bumpy, the track, because it's still old school. But uh, so far, I've enjoyed a lot. I only did like eight laps so far. But it made me feel like uh, like you want to go fast, you want to push more, and that's quite nice. Italy is known for its gastronomy and its food, pasta, pizza, but also, and as we're in endurance racing, coffee. So who better than to give a lesson, potentially, to all of us, uh, than Nicola, he's a barista here uh, at Light Iron Links Hospitality, and I've got two fantastic drivers from Iron Links with me today, okay? And you're gonna judge which one has made the best cappuccino at the, at the end, okay? Perfect, yes. Okay, so he's a good dose of cappuccino, good uh, milk. Uh, in Italy, you uh, drink uh, just uh, the morning cappuccino and then uh, coffee for the rest of the day. <laughs> come on, David, come on. So what do you think? What's the design? Uh, the design, I design a mountain. Do you see that the uh, two, eh? It's a mountain. Can you do better? Yes, of course. Okay. Take it away. I try to do better. Uh, for him, uh, it's much easier because uh, he learned uh, all the secrets from me. And, uh, but anyway. We, we need to give him an advantage, otherwise uh, it will be a disaster. What design are you going for, David? It's <laughs> a disaster. This is uh, art, this is art. Okay. Uh, and it's like a little fish. <laughs> yeah, a little fish, uh, look. With a bit of coffee, this one is a bit stronger. You are not Italian, you cannot understand the real secret of cappuccino. Nicola can judge much better than us. Eh? The mountain or the fish? Uh, Monte, Monte. Dan, Dan Monte. The, the winner is uh, Matteo. I put a lot of effort, but uh, okay, I lose this one. Okay, no problem. Imagine starting out your motorsporting career and being cited as one of the drivers to look out for. Then going on to winning the 24 Hours of Le Mans in LMP2, following that up with being nominated Rookie of the Year in LMP1, then being a test driver for Toyota. Well, at only 24 years old, Tom Alon has already accomplished all that. And this year on the ELMS, he'll be driving for the Belgian team Molna Motorsport. Now, just before his first laps here in Imola, we followed him for the day. Là, on a un run plan qui est déjà prédéfini en amont. 
Donc euh, là, là, on voit là, les mécanos ça faire un petit peu pour, pour, pour être prêt pour la session de 9h. Off to the right and left to the, to the top one, so you can do yourself while driving. Fine. I was quite young, I guess you'd say. I started to rise up the order quite quickly. Every year, I went up a level in the categories. Then, overnight, because of COVID and a few other issues, uh, it's been a bit in free fall, my career. But these things strengthen you. En fait, le dernier virage, c'est là où j'ai le plus de mal, c'est genre, t'as pareil que le gaz. Tu tournes, t'es un peu dessous, et t'as pas la conscience de prendre les gaz fort, t'as peur de prendre un gros snap. Tu es à l'aise? I think we still got two or three little things that we really need to find on the car and they will be able to fight right at the front. But for a first race, for a team which was learning about both the championship and the car, I think what we did was not bad at all. Allez, on fouille jusqu'au bout, si tu peux donner un feeling sur ton tour. Ah, la balance, c'est ok, il n'y a pas trop d'efforts, c'est ça, c'est neuf. Oui, give me the plus value on the pit timer if you can, and box in this lap, box in this lap, remove water pipe, driver change. Yeah, to be honest, the car is really good, hein? Huh? It's nice, right? Yeah, it's really nice. Like it's, it's the perfect uh, race base, to be honest. It's safe. It's quite quick. It's fine. I'm working to do the 24 hours of Le Mans, and clearly, you know, that's a big goal. For me, the 24 hours of Le Mans is the flagship race, and I absolutely don't want to miss it. I really won't be happy if I miss out, so I'm going to do everything I can to be there. They're 17 and 19 years old. Finn Gersitz and Bailey Voisin came second in Le Castellet last month in LMP3. Teammates on the track, friends off the track. We caught up with them for a little interview. I think an F1 car of some description, probably the Lotus 79 car, just because it was so, like, so uh, revolutionary in that world. So I think Lotus 79 F1 car. I think I prefer more a prototype, like the, the Porsche LMP1. Uh, I really like, the, like these cars, yeah. And watch me, eyes on me. Tonight I am your... Uh, probably George Russell. One second. Uh, I think I would choose a really experienced Le Mans driver like Andre Lotterer, um, yeah, from the prototypes. This is my game. This is my game. This is my game. I really enjoy my skiing. Uh, given I live in Switzerland, so the mountains are really close to us. Well, last week I was fishing and also a bit of golfing to calm down and um, yeah, just to, for calm down because uh, under the week I'm going to box, boxing and um, yeah, that's a really good, good sport for training the, um, yeah, for training for a motorsport. Bit of rap, hip hop, just generally, you know, good. Good, good music is fine. Uh, I prefer the deep house music also before the start, uh, like Charles, uh, Love Tonight, or that is my favorite music. I am your guide, love. Now let's ride. Hey, you listen. That's a good question. Um, Fernando Alonso. Because he's done so much Formula One, but he's also done prototype racing, so I think, yeah, I think he'd be a really cool teammate to have. Max has something, he's a really good racer, and um, I think I could learn a lot from him. Come on, let's So Nicola Veroni is now competing in ELMS. In Le Castellet, he took victory with Rinaldi Racing and will be looking to repeat that performance here in Imola. After finishing third in the Le Mans Cup last season, Nicolas Veroni has stepped up to the ELMS. As a child in his native Argentina, it wasn't football, but the steering wheel that made him dream. When I was, I think, seven, seven, I said to my father, hey, I want to start karting, you know, I want to start going. So I started, you know, in a 
going like Saturdays, like it's like, you know, an activity like playing football, you know, it started like a game, like a hobby. And, and then it started, you know, taking it more, more professional as, as I was growing up. His early years in karting culminated in a third place in the juniors at the end of 2015. Then it was time to join the big leagues and the victories continued as he progressed up the ladder. The most recent in the Castellet last month in GTE, taking even him by surprise. Nobody expects us to be, to be fighting for the win. If you see, we are the only lineup with two bronzes and one silver. So I think everyone was saying, okay, this, this car maybe will not be so competitive, but in the end, uh, it paid off. So yeah, we're, we were really happy. Still, you know, also it's new for the team, this, this, this championship, this car, this tire, because the Goodyear tire also is new for them. So we are still trying to figure out how, how it works and, and how to take the best out of it. Imola is full of emotion for Nicholas, as it's where the great Ayrton Senna lost his life in Tamburello on May the 1st, 1994. I'm Argentinian, so, I mean, he was Brazilian, but still, you know, he's, he's close. And yeah, he was my hero for, not only for his driving, but for his atti attitude, you know, in, in, the, in the track and off the track. So that's why I, I respect him so much and I, and uh, yeah, he's my hero. French team Panis Racing finished on the podium in Le Castellet, but they'll be looking for their first victory of the ELMS season here in Imola. So we followed them during the qualifications where the Dutch driver Job van Oytert was at the wheel of the number 65 car. Hey, Vegan, no? 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 Vegan, Mais c'est quand même bien C'est bien faux Ça aurait fait quoi bah, C'est bien quand même Ça aurait fait deux Il faisait deux, ouais. C'est bien Bravo, on est au bas Ah, on est passé ça We missed the fans last month at Le Castellet, so what a pleasure it is to welcome them here in Imola. Contact with the drivers and the return to some sort of normality. The atmosphere was as wonderful as the weather.
The race is just about to get underway here in sunny Imola. As you can see behind me, the race fans are back and they are so excited for the race to start. So in LMP2, Alessio Rivera clinched pole for AF Corsa car number 88. In LMP3, Malte Jakobsen put car number 17 in pole for Cool Racing. And in LMGTE, Ahmed El Harty clinched his very first pole in ELMS for Oman Racing with TF Sport. Let's go racing. We are ready to go racing. Francois Perodo on his own on the front row for AF Corsa. Philippe Tumadomo should have been alongside for TDS, but he has to start from the pit lane. Behind the pole man, Lorenzo Colombo, the race one winner for Prema, and then Nicolas Croyton alongside him for Cool Racing. That is your front two rows as we get ready for the four hours of Emma. Red lights go off. We are racing not in the snow, but as pollen falls from the in beautiful Italian sunshine. And a great start from Lorenzo Colombo. Sweeps around the outside of the pole sitter as ever, being cautious there, and sensibly so. Oh, trouble behind, and that is Jean-Ludwig Foubert for Cool Racing there. Number 27 car is off. Francois Perodo making sure he survives the opening skirmishes here, but that is a great opportunity for Lorenzo Colombo to start building a lead. Lorenzo Colombo, the race leader then from Francois Perodo. Then Nicolas Croyton chasing to try and get third place back from Julian Canal. The Panis racing driver, Panis on the podium with the 65 car. Last time out in France, he made a good start to move up to third on the run down to Tamburello for the first time. And he is determined to hang on to that. In fact, his sights are set on Francois Perodo in front. Tech One Panis racing crew watching the action closely. Here comes the Panis car, Julian Canal. Lots of experience in these LMP2 machines. So too does Francois Perodo. As they go by the GTE car, Perodo leaves the door open on the inside. Perodo's job is not to stay in front so much, but to avoid trouble. And he needs to do that now with the United Autosport car of Duncan Tappy coming calling. Francois needs to keep his speed up, and that means not battling overly hard. It's a hard job for the gentleman drivers to judge what's enough, what is too much of a battle. But when the pros like Duncan Tappy come calling like that down into the braking area, you just step aside, let him go. 
Safety car deployed. Safety car deployed. Leader, please slow down. So safety car is out. We haven't seen why yet. And now we do. That's Terence Woodward of 360 Racing in the wall. He's out of the car. So that is the good news. He'll be disappointed and possibly a little stiff tomorrow after that impact. More trouble this time for into Europol competition. Charles Cruz, the American driver, has brought the car into the pits and has been wheeled back into the garage. Looks like an overheating issue. Here is the sister car. This is Norma Bramchik of France, leading in LMP3. 16 years old. First sports car season after racing in Spanish Formula 4 last year. Wow, talk about a big step up. What a difference. Back to green flag racing. Lorenzo Colombo jumping away again from the Paris car of Julian Canal. Nicolas Croyton right with him. Croyton right in the slipstream, looking to make a move here. Paris car goes defensive on the run down to Tamburello, hogging the inside line. Can Croyton go the long way around the outside? No, he can't. There's contact. He jumps the curbs. Through goes the United car of Duncan Tappy. He's up to third. And Nicolas Croyton with dirt on the tyres. Francois Perodo right behind him now, looking to try and make another move. As the lead trio break away. A little further back, here is our battle for eighth place in LMP2. Matthias Kaiser, 21, and Bent Fiscal for Algarve Pro Racing. Good pass up at the Varianti Alta. And unfortunately, again, Matthias Kaiser defending that too long, loses ground. Green and yellow into Europol and the red team Turkey car have both gone by him as well. He will need to clean up those tyres to get the maximum grip. Trouble on the exit of Tosa for Rob Hodes, the Team Virage driver spinning just being missed by the P3 leader. We're not far from Marinello, but Ferrari not leading this race. It is Ahmad Al Harty for Oman Racing in the TF Sport Aston Martin. Sarah Bovi is second for Ferrari with the pink iron Lynx machine though. The Iron Dames having a good start to the race. Battle for sixth place in LMP2. Ben Viscal for Algarve Pro. The blue and black car still on the attack. Dives to the inside of Mima Rojas into the Ravazza one, Ravazza two though, Rojas gets the cutback on the inside for Duquesne, so he hangs on to sixth position. But ben Fiscal not deterred, is he? The Mexican's got a lot of work to do here. Huge experience difference between the two. And ben Fiscal outside, inside, outside, inside, inside, down into Tamburello, lunges through. Does he keep it on the island? He does, good pass. Trouble there though for Julian Canal facing the wrong way from second place. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And look, that's Sally Olich in the red and black racing team Turkey car. He's going by him. Little battle happening here. And this is John Falp and Ben Hanley. John Falp, the 47 Algar Pro car. And Ben Hanley right behind for Nielsen Racing. Blue flags being waved at the GTE cars. Handley looking to the inside. Nice clean pass down into the first part of the double left-hander at Rivazza. Replay here, race leader behind Rob Hodes and Lorenzo Colombo on the grass. Hodes didn't know he was there. That was a real heart in the mouth moment for our race leader. Now here is a problem for our GTE Championship leader, Pierre Arrette in the Rinaldi Racing Ferrari, was the winner in Le Castellet. He's facing the wrong way. There is damage on the front of Michael Fassbender's Proton Competition Porsche. Are they linked? Up a Varianti Alta, trying to get it back to the pits. Looks like he's got four steerable wheels. Yes, it does, but some bodywork will need changing. He is losing ground, isn't he? Our race leader has been hit with a penalty for the start drive through penalty car nine for not respecting the formation at the start of the race. Yep, Lorenzo Colombo definitely jumped the start there. And there's a little puff of smoke and contact that puts our cool racing LMP3 car in the wall as well. Well, the team wasting no time at all. Lorenzo Colombo serving his drive through almost immediately and such was his advantage that he should emerge in the lead of the race still. Four, three, two, one, full course yellow, full course yellow. Lots of cars in the pit lane already, that will help them. Let's take a look again on board with Michael Fassbender. This is up to Tosa, Pierre Arette breaks late. 
Drifts a little wide, Fassbender comes inside and whoa, big contact. So what happened there? Now it didn't look like a rep turned hard left, so did he spin the Ferrari? Yes, he did, oh dear. We go back to green and it is the number nine Prema car that leads. 37 from Cool Racing, still in second. United's 22 in third, 88. Francois Perodo, A, of course, is still in fourth ahead of the recovering 65 Panis car. It's been a crazy race so far, and it continues to be crazy for Algar Pro. Two cars in the top 10, but John Falp now in the gravel. Safety car deployed, safety car deployed. It's not just Falp either in LMP3. This is Adrian Keeler for Euro International. He has also gone off. Here is our LMP3 leader now, RLR M Sports, Austin McCusker. One of a number of American drivers coming here to race in Europe. And do you know what? Why wouldn't you? Racing at places like Imola? What a great season. Well, Ahmed Al Hati is a convert, that's for sure. Oban Racing by TF Sport. The Aston Martin remains out front in GTE at the end of the first hour, but they will all soon be making GTE fuel stops. Safety car in this lap. Once more, Lorenzo Colombo gets ready to jump away from the field. And again, slower traffic between himself and the number 37 cool racing car. The United car giving chase. There's three other cars in the way. And although they all come up to speed, you cannot pass when you go green before the start finish line after safety car. And that hampers the 37 car just a little. Drive through penalty, car nine for crossing the white line at pit exit. That is not good news for our race leaders. Full course yellow, we are under full course yellow. Well, that is David Heinemeyer Hansen in the Inter Europol car facing the wrong way. We're trying to find reverse, and that's Andrew Harianto, the absolute racing Porsche, the Indonesian driver hard up against the barriers, and he's facing the wrong way too. Into the pits, Lorenzo Colombo. Driver change this time. Ferdi Habsburg will take over. And presumably he'll have to serve Lorenzo's penalty for him. Been a topsy-turvy race so far for Prema, hasn't it? But right now they are still in the hunt. Phil Hansen ready to take over the leading car as it is now from Duncan Tappy at United Autosports. Tappy in, but he's in the number three LMP3 pit box. Number two is pitting behind, so he's had to come round and it's kind of overrun a little bit and all of that time lost is going to be very hard to make up on track. Getting ready to go back to green, Mulder Motorsports, just head of Racing Team Turkey and Algarve Pro. This is the battle for seventh in LMP2. We go green and immediately, unlike the safety car, you can go and look at that. The Racing Team Turkey car goes around the outside, catches the Mulder Motorsport car completely by surprise, makes the pass into Tosin. The 35 car in front, by the way, is a lap behind BHK Motorsport. And that might get in the way of the Racing Team Turkey car, but that was a great reaction to going back to green from full course yellow. Battle for fourth, Alessio Rivera. Ahead of Ferdi Habsburg now in the Prema racing car, fresh out of the pits, of course. So AF Corsa still in the top four. That car started on pole position and its gentleman driver has now done all his laps, Francois Perodo. On board with Alessio Rivera, down into Tosa, couple of cars in front, Euro International in front of us and ahead. That's his target, the United Autosports car, but the Prema car, look at that, 71,000 behind Ferdi Habsburg piling on the pressure. These two young guns battling for fourth place. Uh, as we get through the Piratella, does he get through on the inside of Euro International? Yes, he does. Down into Aqua Minerale. Oh, that's big speed down into the double right-hander at the bottom of the dip. There's the United car. Down now into the Ravazza. Here comes Prema on the inside. Ferdi Habsburg, nice clean pass. Alessio Rivera immediately snapping at his heels into Ravazza too to try and counter-attack. With Phil Hanter now is Ferdi Habsburg. Couple of slower cars in front. Nielsen Racing battling into Europol. They're a lap behind our lead group. And look at this, three wide, four wide. Little bit of contact there, maybe. Oh, there is. Hey, of course, a contact on the inside as they go through. Following Phil Hansen, Leslie Rivera. Prema can't believe it as their man gets shoved off on the outside. But Ferdi Habsburg rejoins. In the pits, Alessio Rivera now. 
And this is not a regular stop. Trolleys are going underneath. This is bad news for AF Corsa. Alessio Vera being pushed back into the garage. Doesn't look like there's visible damage. Is it steering maybe then from that bump with the Inter Europol car back in Tosa in that big five-way scrap? What does his teammate Francois Perodo know? Uh, I haven't seen much on the onboard. I think uh, it looked like Alessio was following two other LMP2 fighting for second or third place overall. And they hit some traffic in T7, so it is what it is. It's quite a narrow track, so yeah, it was brave, but we got unlucky on that one. Very tough start for everyone, you know, with the full course yellows and stuff. You started in pole. Just tell us how it went for you. Uh, well, my, uh, I tried to keep it safe. Uh, Colombo overtook me on the outside, which was a really good move, but uh, then I uh, tried to uh, keep it clean, no contact, no, no mistake. Handed the car in P4 overall to Alessio, so I was pretty happy. And uh, yeah, it could have been a great result, but I think now it's going to be a little bit harder. Hard two for Prema. This is Ferdi Habsburg chasing down Patrick Pile, the former Porsche GT ace, multiple class winner at Le Mans for the Edex Sport team. Habsburg on the recovery. You can see that Pachi Pile's car looks a handful. He's defending on the inside and around the outside. That's very brave from Ferdy Habsburg. Wheel to wheel, door handle to door handle. Pile taking none of that. Gives him the gravel trap to recover in. It's been an entertaining race so far for Edex Sport. The car looks very good, you know. Um, Paul did an amazing job in the first stint. He gives the car in a good position for Patrick on now. Patrick is very solid, he fights a lot, on lap after lap he's able to gain some position, so we are now before the race is still long, two hours to the go, to the end, but uh, it's good for the team and Patrick, Patrick is doing, doing a really great job. The pace, of course, we'll try to, to fight and maybe to catch a podium, and if we can, even better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Pile is going to have to deal with the resurgent Ferdinand Habsburg, the Prema driver perfectly poised on the entrance down into Tamborello. Dice through on the inside. He goes up to fourth place. Edek back down to fifth. Two hours done, two hours to go. New race leader is the 37 Cool Racing entry. This is Nico Lapierre Yiffeye waiting for his turn towards the end of the race. But the man who started it, 19-year-old Nicolas Croyton, is waiting to talk to Haley. Our car felt really good from the start and I knew that I can't really overtake here um, on the track. That it was very difficult, but so we just decided to fuel safe and manage it. And uh, yeah, at the end we could go a lap longer and then, yeah, luckily for us, the full course yellow came out. So uh, we gained quite a lot on everybody else. So cool racing lead overall. Here's our LMP3 leader, K Van Berlo for United Autosports in the number three machine that qualified only 11th in class, but good opening runs from Andrew Bentley has left them in a very strong position. And K Van Berlo will be keen to exploit that. Sam De Haan is the leader in GTE, Oman Racing with TF Sport, started from pole in the class by Ahmad Al Harty. Really good opening stint from him. And the car has remained in front pretty much all the way with Marco Sorensen still in the locker. Oh, and there's trouble for Rahel Frey, the Iron Lynx team. They were on the fringes of the podium, right rear puncture and some damage as she heads out of Tosa. So it's happened early in the lap or she'd have gone into the pits. It's exiting Tamburello. Well, this car has so much pace and so little good luck. Rahel Frey trying to creep it back to the pit lane. They're going to change that right rear tyre, maybe take a look at the damage and address that in the next pit stop. Lead battle in GTE. Sam Dehan for Oman Racing. Right behind him, Johnny Adam for yeah, Oman Racing. Tom Ferrier, the boss of TF Sport, looking through his fingertips at the screens for this one. Johnny Adam, factory Aston driver, Le Mans class winner, chasing Sam Dehan. Previous experience for Sam was in the British GT Championship. Good battle between these teammates, but Johnny Adam comes calling on the inside to Tosa. Sam Dehan just rolls open the steering a little to give them racing room. No need to go rubbing there. No disgrace being passed by Johnny Adam, a man of his calibre. Sam Dehan is still in an Oman racing with TF Sport 1-2. He is just now following. Inside the final 90 minutes here in scorching Imola, Nico Lapierre, the race leader for Cool Racing and scorching Nico, 
eight seconds clear of the second place, Nico, which is Nicola Jama in the 65 Panis Racing entry. Third for Prema. So Prema back in a podium spot after two drive throughs and being eased off the track. There's Yifaye, ready to take over from Lapierre. Race leader in the pits. 80 minutes on the clock. Nico Lapierre loosening the belts. Yifaye runs around. Team members will help the old driver out and the new driver in. And that cycles Prema back to the top of the pile once more. But a lot of racing here to go. Ferdy Habsburg, the leader for Prema. Leader in the pits and driver change. There goes Ferdy Habsburg and into the car, hidden behind all the bodies, is Louis Delatraz. So the Swiss will finish the race. Gabby Aubrey for Team Virage in traffic. And in the wall, Philip Cimadomo, the TDS racing by Vianti car that started from the pit lane, was the other car involved. Out of the pits comes the number nine Prema car. Yellow flags for Gabby Aubrey, but it does look as though we may go full course yellow. And we do. So off the pit lane speed limiter and back on it now for the number nine car. Jot van Eitert, the race leader for Panis. Uh, the car right behind, by the way, 37, that's second for Cool Racing. That's how close this battle is right now. Let's hear now from Nicolas Jama in the Panis garage. Unfortunately, uh, Julien just locked up, tried to break a little bit too late. Uh, you know, we, he was trying to catch the, the, the leader at that point. We were P2. Uh, break a bit late, locked up the rears and, and had a little spin, but uh, that was OK. You may, oh, here he is. Here's the man himself. We're just talking about your, your little trip off piece there. <laughs> um, yeah, so then you've got obviously kind of great tyre strategy from you because it meant that you ran out on um, Julian's tyres, right? Yeah, I kept uh, Julian tires on the right, which uh, which wasn't easy to be honest on track, but uh, it was the right call to be able to to jump some sp some some places in the in the pit lane, uh, and then keeping it together on track, trying to trying to keep a good pace, which uh, which I think I did. We kept the, the same the same gap with the with the leader, so uh, so that was good. And now uh, we're leading again, <laughs> so one hour and five minutes to go, and we're going to try and Yelp is going to try and keep it there. Back to green flag racing, but there is more trouble. This is Sergio Campana for BHK Motorsport, and he is in the gravel. Guess what? It's a full course yellow. In American racing, they say cautions breed cautions, by which I mean drivers lose a fraction of the focus, tyres lose temperature and pressure, brakes lose temperature. And when you go back to green flag racing, the cars are very edgy and it's easier to put them off the island. Here, though, are our two leaders, again, just about half a second apart as we go green there in Aqua Minerale, climbing the rise up to the Variante Alta. In the old days, they'd come straight towards the camera. There was no chicane. Think how fast this must have been in 1950s racing cars. And then over the blind brows, sweeping down the hill towards the Rivazza. So reliant there on Marshall's flags, you see nothing of what's ahead of you down the hill. Panis and Cool, 1-2. Leaders in the GTE class, still Oman racing with TF Sport. 69 back in front, Marco Sorensen at the wheel. Let's hear from the man that started the car, Ahmed Al Harty. It was a really, really exciting feeling yesterday to have secured my first pole. Um, and it's such an amazing uh, racetrack as well. Imola, wow, you know, it's another huge box uh, ticked uh, on, my, uh, on my ever dream list or bucket list, whatever you call it. <laughs> Drivers have a different way of dealing with the pressure when somebody else is driving. Shilin Canal does a little bit of helmet cleaning. Jan van Eitert, his teammate, is out front for Panis Racing. Yiffie in the cool racing car, still in second place. There he is as we look back from the 93 Proton Porsche. The battle continues to rage. 40 minutes to go here in Imola. Let's catch up now with Iron Lynx and hear from Rahel Frey. Hayley is with her. I'm a little bit lost in words. I mean, Sarah had such a brilliant start. We were in a solid uh, second position. And basically the target was just to bring it home. But uh, indeed, I, I believe I had a, long, a slow puncture. We couldn't follow the pressure. Uh, the, 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 the sensors were not working. And then at one stage, I just had a tire explosion. So no contact at all. I just lost it. And unfortunately, I also hit the wall. Um, then it was even difficult to bring it back. And we had to stop several times. So basically, the, the race is gone. But yeah. 
it was just due to a slow puncture and in the end a tyre explosion. Paddis racing in the pits, leader is in, Jan van Eiter will stay in the car. Looks like fuel only, the Goodyear technician just double checking the tyres. Final stop for Yiffy Yee, cool racing, Paul-Luc Chatin, Edex Sport right behind as well. 28 car coming in from what was second. Louis Delatraz for Premo, the race leader from Tom Gamble at United and Algar Pro Sophia Flush. 28 minutes on the clock and counting. Replay here. Uh, this is Thomas Laurent trying to go outside, then inside Richard Bradley. The Duquesne car, though, on the racing line as they go into Tamborello. Laurent in the gravel. And we go full course yellow once more. Back down to 80 kilometers an hour. Onto the pit lane speed limit button comes the race leader, Louis Delatraz. And that is the view of the contact from the Edex Sport right behind Paul Luc Chatin, just dodging that bullet. Leader in the pits, final stop for Louis Delatraz under full course yellow. So they're losing very little ground and this could be really good news for them and the 22 United car. In this little queue is the battle for third. Algarve Pro ahead of Yiffy Yi, who's in third. Then the White Nose TDS Racing ahead of Jot van Eyten, who is in fourth. Who makes the best of the restart here? This is going to be tough for the guy at the back of the queue, but Yiffy Yi's got a slower car in front as well. Up to the Piratella, we go green now. Van Eyten on the inside of Yiffy Yi over the curbs, trying to go by. Actually, the lap cars have made a better start of it as our two men for third place battle. Oh, and Yiffy Yi! Grabs third place back into Aqua Minerale, but that is still well alight, isn't it? Yafanaita will be cursing, made the better start, got alongside Yiffy Yi, but the racetrack was against him. Meanwhile, the Algar Pro and TDS Racing by Vianti cars, they're a lap apart, actually. The Algar Pro car is 16th, the TDS car in 10th. And here comes Yiffy Yi, shuts the door on the inside, knows that Van Eyten will have a lunch there, even on what are still cold tyres into the Ravazza. It's such a classic passing place here at Imola. Now, Yiffy Yi has to deal with the lap traffic in front of him with a race rival for the podium right in his wheel tracks. The Algar Pro car's got good speed. Despite its 16th place position, both Algar Pro cars were in the top 10 in the first half of the race. And nothing wrong with them at all, nothing wrong either with the Cool Racing or Panis entries. There's Panis Tech One crew watching with interest. Out front is Prema. Louis Delatraz, the race leader for Prema. They've spent a lot of time in the race lead. They've been knocked off track. They've incurred two drive-through penalties. And luck has fallen their way. Marco Sorensen leading in GTE into the final 10 minutes. The Aston Martin, Oman Racing with TF Sport out front. It's a 1-2 for the team at the moment. Trouble for Inter Europol in the final 10 minutes. Matches Kapicic in the gravel out of fourth place in LMP3. And just rolled off the road, tried to make it through the gravel trap, could not do so. Here is our race leader then, Louis Delatraz for Prema. Inside the final five minutes and a 10 second advantage over the 22 United Autosport car. And United won't be able to close as we go full course yellow again. 37 cool, still in third, 65 Panis in fourth. How will that battle end up? I did pray a lot, says Ferdy Habsburg. Yeah, and drove pretty quickly as well. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Full course yellow removed. Full course yellow removed. As he comes to the line, he will start the final lap. Our race leader for Prema, Louis Delatraz, the Swiss driver. There'll be less than a minute on the clock as he gets the start finish line. The final lap of a crazy round two of the LMS season, the four hours of Imola. So good to be back at such a legendary circuit. And again, it has produced an enthralling race and Prema have come through it all. United looks set for second. Anybody's guess who's gonna take third, Cool or Panis? 
one of them. Very relaxed in the Prema garage. The gap is coming down to the 22 United car on the final lap, but it will not come down far enough. Out of Tosa for the final time, beginning the climb, the steep climb up to the Piratella. Popping over the brow into the braking area, sweeping left, left again, and then diving down the hill to the legendary Aqua Minerale. Here, the track skirts around a primary school playground and tennis courts. This track is built literally in the heart of the city of Imola, not far from Bologna. Through the Varianti Alta for the final time. Well, there have been times where Prema wondered what they had to do to win this race. There have been times where it looked like nobody else had a shout. And Prema, so successful in so many single-seater categories, have come here and have already proved that they are a match for anyone in LMP2 in the European Le Mans series. Victory in round two, as in round one, goes to Prema. The second win of the season for Prema Racing in LMP3. Vichy goes to number three United Autosports car and in 20th Oman Racing with TF Sport claim the top spot of the GTE podium. A tough race though, nine of our 42 starters did not make it to the flag. I cannot really believe it, to be honest. It started on a really bad foot, it went even worse. And uh, in the end, we're here uh, P1. So sometimes you need luck, and yeah, we're very fast, very, very fast all weekend. And uh, I mean, yeah, we did, uh, I think, good job. And uh, without penalties, it would have been much easier for sure, but we're very happy. Our race winners, Lorenzo Colombo, Louis de la Chaz, Ferdi Habsburg. Second, Phil Hansen, Tom Gamble, and Duncan Tappy from the 22 United car. Cool Racing taking third with Nico Lapierre, Nicolas Croyton, and Yiffa Yi. After a third of our races, Prema have a perfect score. Panis and Cool Racing give chase. It's the second straight Pro-Am victory for racing Team Turkey, Sally Yolic, Charlie Eastwood and Jack Aitken. A nutritional race, I think. Uh, we kind of knew it was going to be difficult with how tight and twisty the track is with the traffic but a lot of people made mistakes and we all three of us just kept it on the black stuff and uh, I think we we're decently quick at the end as well just couldn't quite get the next overall position but yeah chuffed to get the program win. The win for Sally Ollis, Charlie Eastwood and Jack Aitken from Philip Chomodomo, Matthias Besch and team and founder Helm Rodriguez Salas, Matt Bell and Ben Hanley taking third and Racing Team Turkey with a perfect score are leading in the Pro-Am standings after two races. For the first time this season, our GTE winners, Oman Racing with TF Sport, the Aston Martin driven by Ahmed Al Harty, Sam Dehan and Marco Sorensen. Yeah, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, Ahmed here, he pulled out a, a really good gap and that gave us a lot of good things regarding the strategy uh, side of things. But I had the easy job today, so it all came down to Ahmed in the beginning and, and Sam in the middle, so we're just happy. And a great team one too for Tom Ferrier with John Hartshorn, Enrique Chavez and Johnny Adam taking second. The Kessel Racing Ferrari disqualified post-race, so third goes to Duncan Cameron, Matt Griffin and David Perel in the 55 Spirit of Race Ferrari. Vichy in LMP3 fell to United Autosports. Without Jim McGuire, their American co-driver this weekend, Kay Van Berlo and Andrew Bentley brought it home. I mean, it was, it, for me, it was a good, good double stint. Um, there were loads of opportunities to mess it up. I just didn't take any of them. So there was a bit of chaos. Um, yeah, so it was just the groundwork. And, you know, this is all thanks to Jim, uh, Jim McGuire. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it here, but, uh, you know, we're, we're still out. And uh, it's a huge victory for United, uh, for Aero, for Jim, for me and for Kai. Uh, yeah, it's just exceptional. Just a faultless effort uh, pretty much all weekend. Um, 
and uh, Kai just just didn't make any mistakes. Engineers were awesome. Uh, Xavi was brilliant, and uh, everybody in the team just just awesome. Just couldn't couldn't be better. So Kai Van Berlo and Andrew Bentley claim victory in LMP3 from Cool Racing's Nico Maulini, Jean-Ludric Foubert and Antoine Ducan. Cool Racing's Maurice Smith, Michael Benham and Malte Jakobsen ending up in third place on the podium. And it is a weekend that most Smith and Malte Jakobsen particularly will remember having claimed victory in the Le Mans Cup race on the Saturday and a podium in the LMS on the Sunday. But what a place to do it and the number 17 Cool Racing team lead our championship after the first two races. That's a wrap from here in Imola. For the next round of the ELMS, we will be staying in Italy, but going to Monza in a month's time. So until then, ciao.